One of the science experiments mentioned in the novel is one by a French aristocrat by the name of Comte de Biffon. And what this man is trying to accomplish is to take a physical measurement of the age of the Earth. This is significant because it's the first time a Newtonian method is being applied to try to find the Earth's age. So what the Comte does is he orders the casting of two dozen small solid iron globes. And each one of these globes has its own volume, has its own diameter. So what he wants to do is heat these globes up until they're white hot and then let them cool down and measure the time it takes uh, for them to cool down enough that they can be touched by a human hand. So the two main things he's looking at is the volume of the sphere and the time it takes to cool down. So say he measures the smallest one first and notes the time and then he does the second smallest one and so on and so forth until he has all two dozen of the globes done. Though I've only got eight in my example. So what he does next is he finds a mathematical relationship between the volume of his spheres and the time they took to cool. I've just used a linear relationship in my example just for the sake of simplicity. So it could be linear, it could be curvy linear, exponential, who knows what it was. The point is he's found a pattern in the relationship between these two variables. But once he's found this pattern, he's able to extrapolate such by asking the question, well, if I had a sphere that was the size of the Earth, well, how long would that take to cool? So he plugs in the volume of the Earth in his equation and finds a time. And the reason he does such is because he thinks during the Earth's creation, he thinks it was molten hot at that time. There's a historical discrepancy why he thinks this, but uh, one version is he assumed that the Earth had formed in conjunction with the Sun and therefore had started in a molten state. The other version of the story is that he thought the Earth was formed from bits and pieces of a comet that had broken up going around the Sun. At any rate, he finds a cooling time and he repeats the same experiment with different materials such as glass and stone. And from all of these, he calculates that the Earth must be at least 74,832 years old. Now this seems like a rather small number compared to what we know today, but in the Comte's time there was no notion of radioactive decay and the heat that adds to the system. Nonetheless, it was a lot larger number than any of the previous calculations thus far, which were all based on adding up generations in the Bible. So he publishes his results in a book on natural history in 1778, but the University of Paris condemns him over the number and he issues a retraction to keep them happy. The date, however, is significant because just three years before, James Hutton has presented his theory of the earth to the Royal Society in Edinburgh, in which he too concludes that the earth must be a lot older than previously thought. A historical irony presents in that Buffon was using a Newtonian method in finding the age of the earth, while Newton himself, a staunch Christian, relied on Usher's methodology in his own calculation, and not unsurprisingly coming to the same conclusion as the bishop, plus or minus a few years.